Hello and welcome to the Faculty of Engineering and Design's virtual tour. This unit will cover the lab spaces used for the Department of Electronics, which includes electrical, engineering physics, and sustainable and renewable energy engineering. This tour was developed by students and researchers of Carleton University in collaboration with the Faculty of Engineering and Design and the Carleton Immersive Media Studio, or SIMS team. During our tour, we will walk through campus, enter labs, discuss the equipment, and hear from current students about their experience. Each of our destinations will be marked with a red sphere and have been captured within the 360 degree photosphere, which enables you to pan around the three-dimensional space. During our transitions from room to room, I encourage you to ask any questions you have about engineering and design at Carleton. Now let's get started. Our first spot is the Academic Support Office, found on the main floor of the Minto Center for Advanced Studies in Engineering. Probably been receiving a lot of emails from our Engineering Academic Support Office, or the ASO for short. The ASO team is here to assist engineering students with course selection, registration, learning resources, and extra support. They are available to help you from your first year all the way through to graduation. All ASO services are currently being delivered remotely, but the team is always just an email away. Erin, could you tell us about your experience with the Academic Support Office? The Academic Support Office was there to help me create a schedule that worked for my needs and really made sure I felt ready for my first year in engineering. The LC McGill Learning Center, EMLC, is focused on furthering students' understanding and comprehension in their engineering studies and provides students with the academic support they need to achieve their learning goals. The EMLC operates using a peer tutoring model to offer academic support to first-year engineering students. Peer tutors, who we call scholars, are hired and trained to assist you in your learning. Whether you have a quick question, want to review a solution, or just need a fresh explanation of content that was covered in class, our engineering scholars are here to help with your first year engineering courses. And while the EMLC can't be delivering in-person services this fall, they will be available through a new online tutoring platform. Imran, can you tell us about your experience with the LC McGill Learning Center? Yeah, for sure. I used the LC McGill Learning Center a couple times through my undergraduate degree, especially in my first year. The LC McGill Learning Center was extremely helpful and helping me review topics before midterms and final exams to make sure I had all my bases covered, as well as just to make sure I had a more thorough understanding of all the course material. We are now going to head to McKenzie Building. Although both buildings are connected, it's nice to walk outside through the engineering quad where there's picnic tables, benches, and summer study spots. In the winter, students often opt to keep warm by using our heated underground tunnel system that can connect you to any building on campus. Now let's head inside.
We're now headed to the third floor in the McKenzie Building. You're currently in the office space for the Carleton Student Engineering Society, or CSES for short. All students are members of CSES and have access to many of their services like textbook trades, networking nights, social events, and much more. Densi, who is currently the VP of Finance, is going to be talking a little bit more about what the CSES office does. CSES offers academic events and social events to all of the Carleton Engineering community, such as the Carleton Engineering Competition and Trivia Nights. They also offer conferences where engineering students can go meet students from other universities. CSES also offers funding for clubs and societies and for fourth year projects. The 3300 block is unique to the engineering building. This block is dedicated to our engineering clubs and societies. There's stream-specific societies like CMAS and Streesoc, and engineering clubs like EWB, CU in Space, and many more. This area is also home to Leo's Lounge, which is completely volunteer-run. It's also the cheapest spot on campus to grab a coffee or snack before class, or if you're just looking to hang out, play some games, and make new friends. Nancy's going to talk a little bit about her time involved in the Carleton engineering community. I've been part of CMAS and Q for the past few years. Q is a Carleton University Engineer, where I was Finance Director. At CMAS, I started off as a first year rep and then made my way up to be a Finance Director. I was also a cast member in Michael Mina. Sound familiar? That's because the Carleton Engineering Musical puts on two parody shows every year. I was also part of EngFrosh, which is the fall orientation program geared towards the engineering and design students. I started off as a frosh, then a facil, and now I've been planning members for two years. I would highly recommend students to get involved in the CNG community. It helps you make meaningful connections and develop skills that you don't learn in class. This lab introduces all first-year engineering students to electrical circuits and mechatronics. Students are introduced to DC and AC circuit behavior and electrical measurements using waveform generators, oscilloscopes, and multimeters. Students are introduced to digital systems based on the Raspberry Pi single board computer. Python coding is used to enable sensor measurements as well as control of displays and actuators through the general purpose input-output GPIO pins. Students work in multidisciplinary groups to complete a mechatronics project. Now let's hear from Erin about her experience in this lab. The mechatronic lab was my first real hands-on engineering experience. Before then, I had never touched a breadboard, let alone a Raspberry Pi, and being able to use them both with my new coding knowledge to design my own project was absolutely amazing. It can really confirm for me that I wanted to be an engineer. This fall, lab stations will be remotely accessed from outside the university. Students are able to control the generator and oscilloscope or remotely program the Raspberry Pi and observe the results through a webcam. TAs will be available in the lab and by phone or Zoom to help students through their experiment. This lab provides third and fourth year classes with access to specialized instruments for semiconductor device measurements, as well as both analog and digital circuit experiments. Students use the Semiconductor Parameter An Analyzer, or SPA, to make precise measurements that allow them to relate to device electrical characteristics to physical layout and fabrication process parameters. This is essential in both the third year Semiconductor Device course and the fourth year Solar Cell course. The lab provides advanced mixed signal oscilloscopes that enable characterization of integrated pressure and temperature sensor circuitry 
and testing of radio communication circuits and course here elective courses. Logic analyzers enable detailed study of signal timing on a microprocessor bus or a programmable logic device. Digital circuits are synthesized and tested on field programmable gate arrays or FPGAs using hardware description language, HDL, to implement, for example, a serializer or deserializer, CERDs, which is an essential functional block in high-speed communications. Students will work in pairs to complete the labs with the assistance of a teacher's assistant. We're now in the analog lab. Students in many of our different engineering programs use this to design, build, and test electronic circuit boards. Students can learn how to use operational amplifiers, bipolar transistors, and MOSFETs. Third year students are introduced to BJTs, semiconductors, filter design, and oscilloscopes. You'll learn about basic properties of signals and circuit elements using Kirchhoff's laws. Students will also learn to reprogram the hardware. Tell us about your experience in this lab, Jess. This lab is what really introduced me to circuits and the different components that can be implemented within them. It was also really cool to be able to see what was happening inside our circuits by seeing the waveforms on the oscilloscopes. We are now going to leave McKenzie Building and head to our last stop for the tour, located in the Canal Building. On your left, you'll see the University Center, which houses the bookstore, cafeteria, pubs and restaurants, student associations, lecture halls, and classrooms. Staying outside, the quad has picnic tables and benches to enjoy lunch or study in the summer. Okay, let's head into our last lab. This is the Hydro Ottawa Lab for Smart Grid Technology. This lab is primarily used for students in the Sustainable and Renewable Energy Engineering courses. Students complete experiments on key power topics including circuits such as buck and boost controllers, three-phase systems, rotating machines and motor control, and loads and their effect on power quality. Students are introduced to industry standard ETAP power system analysis software, enabling them to investigate all aspects of power generation, transmission, and distribution. 
This fall, lab stations will be remotely accessed from outside the university. Test circuits will be pre-wired by teaching assistants. Students are able to control the lab vault control and measurement modules to complete experiments. We have now reached the end of our tour. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them now or email us at engineeringoutreach at carlton.ca. Best of luck and I hope to see you around.